doula. She's a childbirth education. Amen. Which is a childbirth educator. She's also a licensed agent, insurance company. Amen. So you need some license. She's also a tax preparer. She's my Proverbs 31. And all of that. She's all of that in the bag of chips. She's the mother of all my children. Amen. All my children. But the main thing, she's my wife. Amen. Bring your beautiful self on a pink tank. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for my husband, Pastor Barry Jones, Sr. Thank God for everybody who is here today. This is quite different, but I do have a message from the Lord today. And the topic, we were in Louisiana and the Lord that will be in the middle of the night, he said that um, there is no validation in unforgiveness. Did you hear me? Amen. There is no validation in unforgiveness. The subtopic is the give. No if, ands, or buts. I believe that from the church to the world, many people's heart is flooded with unforgiveness. And it's not that the feelings are not righteous. Come on. It's not that the pain didn't happen. Come on. It's not even that you don't have a right to feel the pain. That's right. But you don't have the right to harbor the unforgiveness. And once you come on the Lord's side, you definitely do not have a right to harbor unforgiveness. So if you got unforgiveness in your heart, you might feel a little uncomfortable today. If you entertaining people that got unforgiveness in their heart, you gonna feel uncomfortable today too. Validation, the action of checking or proving the validity of accuracy, right? The action of making or declaring something legally or officially acceptable. There is no validation in unforgiveness. It doesn't matter what they did, how they did it. There is no validation in unforgiveness. Amen. Recognition of affirmation that a person or their feelings or opinions are valid or worthwhile. Your opinions about the offense is not worthwhile. In the long run, who are you really hurting? Think about it. <laughs> that thing that bothered you the most. Who are you really hurting? Are you hurting the person that offended you? No, they sleeping at night. They snoring at night. They going about their day-to-day life. And here we are stuck in the jail cell. We got people locked up in the presence of our heart and think that we are validated. Let's go to James chapter five. James chapter five, I'm gonna be turning a little bit. Y'all know how we do. If you're gonna say something, you need to have some scripture basis for what you say, right? Amen. Hello? Amen. All right, so James chapter five and verse 16, we're gonna use just one verse there. Thank God for my husband, Pastor Barry John Sr. giving me this opportunity today. It says, confess your faults one to another. Do y'all Bible say that? And pray one for another that you may be healed. I truly feel that some people are ill, are sick, have taken on all type of crises in their body because of the contents of their heart. It says confess your faults one to another. What is confess? Admit or state that one has committed a crime or is at fault in some way. 
Let me tell you this. Once a person confess their thoughts to you, Amen. your feelings about the thoughts are no longer validated. Amen. Amen. Y'all hear me? Amen. Once a person confess their thoughts to you, your feelings about the thoughts are no longer validated. Amen. Hello? Confess your thoughts. What's a thought? Failing, weakness, advice, shortcoming, imperfection, all of these things. We're all saturated with those type things. Yeah. Failings, imperfections, right? Yeah. Words used to refer. Any of the average shortcomings of a person. It says we're supposed to pray for one another. Now by nature, we all, when we feel offended, we don't go pray for people. <laughs> we don't go pray for people. We go talk to our food. We go talk to our We go and talk to our person, and we explain to our person how Sister Butter being offended us. Tell the truth, right? Amen. Hello? Amen. I don't even think that that's even wrong when you feel like you have to vent. Come on, talk to me today, right? Amen. So everybody feel like they need to vent. But let me tell you when you just left venting to sin. Come on now. It's okay to express yourself. It's okay to get an observation. It's okay to have a voice of reason. When you step over into sin, it's when now you making this an everyday conversation. Oh my God. When you make a sin, it's when now you just started treating Sister Butter being according to your offense. Come on now. See, that's when it's wrong. It's not wrong to get something off your mind. And you, I'm going to tell you, can I talk about me? When I talk about me, I don't get in trouble. I'm talking about me. See, what I learned in 18 years of my husband being in the ministry, people can do me any kind of way. But as soon as I get a feeling about how they treat me, oh, now I'm at a higher standard than they are. They can talk about me three months straight. But as soon as I start being about their flesh and I start saying how I feel, now all of a sudden I'm held to a higher standard. But see, there's one thing that's got me able to preach this message today. Ooh, uh -huh. Hallelujah! I've got the peace of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I have the ability to still treat you like you're supposed to be treated, no matter the time and the times you offend me. Now that's church right there. That's church right there. So folks, we're supposed to pray. What is pray? To address a solemn request, right? But we don't pray to God we just keep on with our malicious words. Three apologies ago. <laughs> Minister McConnell. Three apologies ago, we still discussing stuff that Sister Butter Bean did. Let's go to Matthew 18. I told y'all I'm going to make you uncomfortable. That's all right. Our forgiveness is not validated. Let's go to Matthew 18. Let's start with verse 15. Woo, help us, God. Amen. Y'all at 15? Amen. Moreover, 18, verse 15, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, what does it say next? So I'm going to help y'all read so y'all can't say it with no scripture up in this thing today. I want y'all to read with me. It says, do what? Between thee and him 
Ontario, you will say, you will feel it. But the pastors, the mother pain, they did it. They showed up. They did it. And you, not a coward, but you go to them and you explain to them the pain that they have caused you. You and that person, one on one. Now, go on, tell the truth. You're not ready to get into your boo. You're not ready to say it to you. You're not ready to say it to your, your, your person. But I'm talking about what the Bible say, right? It says, go to that person alone and you tell them. And it says, if that person receives, your brother, right? Yeah. So that means y'all back on one coin. That's right. What? Come on. Amen. Why can't we do this? Because number one, first thing first, we ain't alone in the room. We tell it all our people instead of telling the person that has offended and hurt us. Is anybody with me today? Yeah. All right. Come on now. Now and say if you if that person hears you gain your brother. But, somebody say but. but. If he will not hear thee, then do what? Then you take what you want. One or two witnesses, right? We always break rank with this verse. We go to the one, two, three first. And the person that inherits us the most is out here on the outskirts, read, supposed to be a mind reader about they did to us. This is scripturally not found. It's out of order. That's come on. Right. Come on, come on. right? Amen. So if you go to that person, you come to Mom J, and Mom J, honey, you stepped on my toe. I know you did. I saw the twinkle in your eye. You got a, you got the feels from doing it. <laughs> right? Come on. Okay. And this time I don't receive you. Bye bye, I gave you the neck action. Oh, See that neck? I can't even hardly do it. This time I'm talking to you. Man, I'm gonna do a hula hoop with that neck. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait a minute now. But you don't even give people a chance to respond. You haven't even gave them a chance to give a reaction to your pain. Times seven. Somebody multiply that. 
me. But listen, you take the secondhand information and you just running with it, right? But I want to hear tell you that God takes secondhand information and he judged too. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant. He said, I forgave thee all thy debt because you desired it. Should thou not also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Come on, put you in whoever you got this beef with. And his Lord was wroth. That means he was mad, he was angry, he was past mad. And he delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts. I ain't talking about, I ain't, I ain't mad with nobody. I, I, I'm at peace. Baby, that's false peace. Until you can look Sister Brother Bean in the eye. Until you can hug them. Until you can be nice to them. Until you can treat them. Come on, come on. 
Gotta be dignified because people be thinking you're mad. You're not supposed to be shysty in the church. All right, let's go to Colossians. I'm gonna come after the praise service because I don't want to hear nobody but pastor. Nah. I'm talking. Can I, can I get my stuff out? Can I get my stuff out, y'all? I need to get my stuff out now. Before you try to hold something, you make sure you done got dressed for the day. 
Put on your holy. It say put on, right? Put on holy, beloved, bowels of mercy. Yes. Phoebe Abigail. Come on. Come on, RJ. Come on, be Phoebe Abigail today. <laughs> Come on, boo. Come on now. There we go. All right. Now we got kindness. The quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. You mad with folks, you can't be kind. You mad with folks, you can't be considerate. Right? That's right. When you mad with folks, you, you ain't holding no more when you mad. Come on. When you mad with folks, you're not beloved at the moment. You don't have bowels of mercy. What next is they put on? That ominous of mine. Come on up here. Who next? Come on, Caleb. Get dressed. <laughs> See how the little child did what I asked in here? No problem. <laughs> All right, now. What's next? Meekness. 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 So kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, considerate. Ominous of mind, the quality of state of being courteous and respectful. Mm -hmm. And then meekness is an attitude. Come on, get meekness, somebody. An attitude or, or quality of heart whereby a person is willing to accept and submit without resistance. Mm -hmm. When somebody try to get on one accord with you, they should meet resistance. Amen. Your spirit is not meek. If somebody's trying to right a wrong, they should not meet resistance. Come on, man. So until you didn't put all this on, until you got dressed, your feelings are not validated. Right? Amen. Where we at? Long suffering. Long suffering. Come on up here, somebody help me with long suffering. I'll see you back there. Come on up here. In it, you know. Come on, in it. Long suffering, oh, having a show of patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. Right? Yeah. Long suffering. You see this over here, baby? You got a whole truckload of issues you got to deal with before you can even think you can hold something in somebody's heart. You got to put this on. You got to get dressed. Yeah. Holy, right? right? Beloved, balls of mercy, right? Yeah. Compassion, oh. kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. What's next? For bearing one another. Come on, bear. You got to put up with me. You got to be bothered with me. Right? For bearing one another. Sometimes it might be heavy to bear, but you still got to love me. For bearing one another. Patience, self control, restraint, tolerance. And then forgiving one another, right? That's right. Forgiving one another means stop feeling angry oh or resentment towards somebody yeah. for an offense, a flaw, yeah. or a mistake. Right. Right. Oh. Come on up here, Jesus. man. Right. Be my forgiveness. Matthew, Jesus. Just I'm walk right. around naked. Yes. Oh. Get close. Get dressed. You naked. Jesus. You naked in the spirit. Yeah. You don't have clothes on. That's right. I don't care how good your dress look. Come on. Y'all know I like to be. Together. I don't care how put together you are. If you hadn't got dressed with this stuff right here, you are in spiritual error. Yes, it happened. 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 But can you still be holy? Can you still be kind? Can you still have long suffering? Can you still have respect? Respect. Right? We get dressed in all the wrong things. This is how we got to get dressed. All right? Forgiving one another. And if any man have a quarrel or argument, this is the Bible I'm reading. This is the Bible that's on your dashboard. This is the Bible that's sitting on your dresser that you ain't open since you got mad. This is the Bible when you online and you following everything they say and don't get the Bible to make sure that it's accurately presented. Right? It said if any man have a quarrel against any, mm -hmm. even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Yes. Uh, yes. Y'all so yeah. yes. remember them? Yeah. Uh, the next time you get mad. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Thank you. And above all things, put on charity. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the bond of perfectness. Yeah. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. The peace of God is not ruling out of your heart because of what's coming out of your mouth. That's how I know. Yeah. When the peace of God is in your heart, it's going to come out of your mouth. That's right. When the peace of God is in your heart, it's going to be in your disposition. Right. Do y'all know the peace of God deal with your disposition too? Yeah. 
Let's go to Ephesians. There is no validation in no forgiveness. Ephesians. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. In verse 30. Mm -hmm. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace. Now, if I didn't apologize to you, why are you still being slanderous? If somebody apologized to you, why are you still slandering their name? That's right. If me and you got on one accord, and you meet somebody, I don't care if they ask you, well, what's going on? I, I don't know y'all used to be close. Baby, that's over with. We done got on one accord right. now. You got to go back and spread the narrative three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. Some people in the body of Christ is still sharing narratives from ten years ago. Do y'all understand me? Do y'all understand that we are in trouble today if God come and get us right now? We have to deal with unforgiveness. Do y'all understand that some saints, you're not going to go to uh, not be God because of uh, being in the street no more, being in the club no more, none of that right there. You don't listen to book and music no more, but you got unforgiveness in your heart. Amen. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? We cannot have unforgiveness in the church. See, people want to hear the preacher preach and the organ. Ain't saying nothing. Just make us stop. Then he do it. But won't he do it? But slap the neighbor three times. No, we gotta come out of sin. We gotta deal with the arrows that's in our heart. That's right. Right? Amen. Amen. Let bitterness. Wrath, what come next? We in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, and what, what it say? And, and, anger. and anger, and what else? And clamor. And clamor. Okay, anger is being extremely upset, right? Or feeling resentment. Wrath is extreme anger, right? Clamor, loud. You still hostile? When you talk about this subject, you still talk loud about it. Come on now. You gotta deal with that. When you when you did when, when this subject come up, you still find yourself getting elevated. Mm -hmm. That's clamor. Yes. Right? Amen. What's next? Y'all talk to me so I can get through that. Clamor, what comes after clamor? An evil speaking. Evil speaking, right? What's next? Be put away from you. Let it all be put away from you. Yes. With all what? Malice. Malice, wrongful intention, especially increasing guilt. Yes. Right? Amen. What's next? And be ye kind one to another. Having or showing what? A friendly, generous, considerate nature. You're yes. just wrong. Yes. What's next? Tender heart. Tender heart. That speaks for itself. Yes. What's next? Forgiving one, one another. How? This is the Bible that I'm reading. That's the word. Your unforgiveness is not validated. Amen. Okay? So, I want to talk about a story that comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And the back story is, there was this um, sin that had took place with a man, and Paul was so angry about it because he felt like the people were being passive about it. Come on now. And he felt like they did not address yeah. the sin that had taken place, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna read you my notes. So, uh, Paul told the Corinthians to put a man outside the spiritual and social protection of the church family until he repented. This is what he felt like should have been done with that sin, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now Paul must tell the Corinthians to restore the repentant man. Mm -hmm. So they show him how they were supposed to deal with sin compared, compared to how they were dealing with it. They were being passive, right? He told them you gotta deal with sin. Yeah. Okay, they did it, they dealt with the sin, and obviously the man was repentant of the sin, yeah. right? So now, you were just as adamant as you were passive about the sin, yeah. now you are just as adamant as holding a grudge about the sin. Yeah. So now Paul must tell the Corinthians to restore the repentant man. Yeah, that's right. Forgive and comfort him, yeah. right? They were 
judge us as wrong in withholding forgiveness and restoration to the man when he repented as they were to welcome him with open arms, approving arms when he was in sin. Do that make sense? Yes. The Corinthian Christians found it easy to err on either extreme. Yes. And that's how we find ourselves. We're on either extreme. Either we're being passive and we're going along with people's wrong, Amen. validating their feelings, right? Or the opposite. Yes. Okay? If discipline is largely lacking in the church of today, so also is the grace of forgiving and comforting those who have done wrong and are truly repenting. Do we ask ourselves, what did we do to contribute to the scenario? How often souls have been indeed swallowed up? You make people feel so bad. You try to put like a weight on somebody when they're trying to walk in forgiveness with you, when they're trying not to be in error with you. You, you get joy out of carrying that baggage. You can overwhelm a person. You can cause people to, you know, commit suicide. You can cause people to have all kind of mental anguish because you got this breach so big and you don't want to deal with the error of your ways. It's not even about the offense anymore. It's about your spirit is not right and how you're dealing with the offense. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Luke. Luke 17. So since the man had responded, responded and repented, there was supposed to be an affirmation of love. Pastor Jones preached a message one time. He said, love the sinner but hate the sin. Right. So we got to separate the two. Yes, I'm the, I don't love what you did, but I still love you. Amen. Do y'all understand me? Yeah. I don't love what you did, but I still love you. Yeah. Luke 17. Then in verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come, right? Yes. But roll unto him through whom they come. Amen. It says, take heed to who? Yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Yes. See, the scripture is straightforward on how to deal with offense. If the person is wrong, say it, deal with it, and then what? Forgive. Yeah. Verse 4. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, how many times in a day? Seven. seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt do what? Forgive him. Forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Mm. Even the apostles in the Bible knew that that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. You mean to tell me if somebody offended me seven times in one day, and they come to me and apologize, you want me to forgive them? They say, Lord, increase our faith. Yeah. Now, over the
walk and talk like it too. Yeah. Right? Amen. Judge. Yeah. That's right. Baby, somebody say yeah. That's a shame. The special need baby say yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, third John. I wrote unto you, verse 9. Third John chapter 1, verse 9. I wrote unto you, but dear Trephes, who love to have the preeminence, yes. among them receiveth us not. It says, Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, practicing against us with malicious words and not content therewith. Right? When you got unforgiveness in your heart, you are not content. When you have unforgiveness in your heart, you are practicing. You practice about what is practicing? Talk foolishly. Or at tedious lengths about something. That's what practicing means. The Bible said he practicing about. When you got unforgiveness in your uh, heart, you carry on about subjects way longer than you should. You hold on to things way longer than you should. So he practiced about talking idly and link chatter to other in an idle or empty way. This is what you do when you have unforgiveness in your heart. Chatting, motor mouth. These are definitions of pray. Mouthy. Right? Babbling. Blabber mouth. Run on at the mouth. Chatter. These are synonyms to practice. It says that he was practicing about, right, against us with malicious words. Your words become malicious. You can't even speak peaceably about a person when you got unforgiveness in your heart. Yeah. Right? You can't stand the sight of them. Every time you see them, you feel something go through you. You know how people say, I felt chills go down my spine when she sang that song. You feel something every time you encounter the person that offends you or that hurts you, right? Amen. Amen. So, it goes on. And let's turn to Thessalonians. Thessalonians 3 and 14. Second Thessalonians 3 and 14. Read it for me. Everything I just read to you was scripture, scripturally documented. If you know a person that is behaving himself in this way and clearly and obviously walking in unforgiveness, you have a responsibility to admonish them. Admonish means to teach. You have a responsibility to instruct them and let them know that what they are doing and how they are carrying is in error. You have a responsibility to tell them, well, since the remedy is forgive, well, brother, the remedy is forgive. Okay? If you're not willing to deal with the order of the scripture to the letter, well, just forgive. Amen. Can you do that? Amen. Just forgive. Amen. Go to Colossians. No, that was that was it. What? So read the rest of that, Mr. Pop. Ah. Yet count him not as an enemy, mm -hmm. but admonish him as a brother. Go ahead. Now the peace of the of Lord, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. By all means, the Lord be with you all. So, in essence, unforgiveness is like I saw um, a post one time. It said unforgiveness is like drinking poison, mm. but expecting the other person to die. Wow. Amen. Right? Amen. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison. But expecting the other person to die. Wow. I don't care what your name is, this subject is something that we have to deal with. That's right. All of the things that we've been through, the hurt, the pain, I can stand here and I promise you it'll be Friday and I'll still be talking about offenses that I have 
had from the moment I came on the Lord's side. Some stuff I can't even say out loud, I have to take it to the grave. But one thing that I hope is that I continue to walk in love. No matter how people treat me and how, you can't be married to a pastor and walk in unforgiveness because this whole church will be dry. There will never be a soul in the church. You have to walk in forgiveness. I want to encourage y'all to let's start dealing with each other, not out of our forgive, unforgiveness, but out of the right spirit. Any relationship that you have, take that relationship, write a list of the good, write a list of the bad. See which one of the list is longer. If that bad is longer, then you need to deal with that. But we cannot walk in unforgiveness and think that we are going to go and see Christ in peace. Back to the answer.